nobody seems to care It's like we've lost our minds You take a look at the news Crime is at an all-time high We can't keep pretending to be blind No more prayer in the schools Now kids have one less good thing to choose And now they're being killed in the classroom I wish I could take it all away, but all I can do is pray that things change. Something's gotta change. HIV is on the rise, spreading throughout this land. We can't keep pretending to be blind. Hello, people of God. This is Derek Braggs, and I'm here to give you some weekly wisdom. Now, today we're talking about, we are talking about a conversation between the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Okay? A conversation between the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Last week, um, I began a series on the first 11 chapters of Genesis. And I briefly mentioned Elohim, which refers to God in creation. Okay. Uh, in scripture, Genesis 1 and 1 says, In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And that word God there, the name of God in the Hebrew there is Elohim. And it refers to God of creation or God in creation. And then when we drop down to Genesis 1 and 26, and God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. Now, this refers to the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. This is the, the us and our that is mentioned. Now, I am aware, okay, that I teach against the Trinity doctrine. Okay, I teach against the Trinity doctrine, and I also covered this uh, in my book, which is Seven Things That the Church should, should Should Teach. Okay, I teach against the Trinity doctrine. Okay, now, um, I don't want you to think that I am making conflicting statements, so I need you to hear me clearly. Okay. There are three that bear record in heaven. First John 5 and 7 says, For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. So that is clear that there are three that bear record in heaven. Okay. Now, what makes the Trinity doctrine erroneous is that it states specifically God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, okay? God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. The error is in making Jesus be God, okay? So let me give you a little backdrop of this, okay? For all that don't know, um, in 325, Constantine um, had a vision um, of conquering in the name of Christianity, okay? Now, at the time, Christianity was not the um, the state religion, okay? In fact, the, the early church at this time was still being persecuted, okay? So, when Constantine has this vision, this dream or whatever, he 
summons all of the religious experts from around the Roman Empire, okay, to come together because he wanted to know who was Jesus. Who was he specifically in relationship to God? Is he God or is he the son of God? Okay. And so what they ended up settling on is um, they combined the two together and it, and he became God, the son. Okay. So as a result, the Trinity uh, took flight, God, the father, God, the son, God, the Holy Spirit. Okay. The error is that they make Jesus be God. Okay. That is the error that they make Jesus be God and they make the Holy Spirit be God. Okay. Because what you have to understand is that, um, the word became flesh. Okay. When the word became flesh, it was no longer God. This is speaking of, of John one. When the word became flesh, it is no longer God. And that flesh has a name, which is Jesus. Okay. That's separation. So it should be, um, it should be the father, the son, and the Holy Spirit. So God, the father, the son of God, and the spirit of God. Okay. So that should be clear. Now, um, I needed to clear this up. Okay. Because. Also, in the process of me speaking against the Trinity doctrine, I seem to have fueled those who reject the Trinity because the Trinity concept is not mentioned in the Bible. Okay, and therefore, they deny the authority of Christ as Lord and Savior, his divine nature. Okay, and also they deny the power of the Holy Spirit. Okay. So I specifically want to address that ideology today. Okay. So what we're going to do is let's evaluate the evidence, which extends from, um, Genesis one and 26, which states again, and God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. Okay. Now I stated previously that Elohim refers to God in creation. Okay. All right. Let us make man in our image after our likeness. Okay. So what we need to understand is that Genesis 1 and 26, the us and the ours. Okay. Let us make man in our image after our likeness. This refers to a future state or the future state when these three, um, well, when the two actually, which is the, the, the word and the spirit will be manifested into the earth realm and we will know them individually. Okay. So in the beginning, we will know them as God, as one with God. Okay. Three that bear record. But when they're released into the, the earth realm, we know them individually as Jesus who, who was then, who then was resurrected and became our Lord and Savior. And after he left the earth realm, the Holy Spirit was released as the comforter to uh, teach us and guide us in all things that, that Christ has, that, that Christ had taught. Okay. Now, um, to further provide evidence of the three, um, I want to focus on a conversation between the father, the son, and the Holy Spirit. Okay. Now this conversation is found in the book of Psalm in Psalms two. Okay. So let's go to Psalm two. Okay. And we're going to read the, 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 these, uh, 13 or so verses first, and then we'll go back and break them down. Okay. So, um, verse one says, why do the heathen rage and the people imagine a vain thing? The Kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed, saying, Let us break their bands asunder and cast away their cords from us. He that sitteth in the heavens shall laugh. The Lord shall have them in derision. Verse 5. Then shall he speak unto them in his wrath and vex them in his sore displeasure. Yet have I set my king upon my holy hill of Zion. 
I will declare the decree. The Lord had said unto me, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. Ask of me, and I shall give thee the heathen for thine inheritance, and the uttermost parts of the earth for thy possession. Thou shalt break them with a rod of iron. Thou shalt dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel. Be wise now, therefore, O ye kings, be instructed, ye judges of the earth. Serve the Lord with fear and rejoice with trembling. Kiss the son, lest he be angry and ye perish from the way. When his wrath is kindled but a little, blessed are all that put their trust in him. So on the surface, it appears that David is just talking and all of this is referring to David. Okay. But when we really analyze this conversation, this chapter, the conversation becomes very clear. Okay. So let's go back and start at verse one. All right. Verse one says the, the Holy Spirit is going to start the conversation. The Holy Spirit says, why do the heathens rage and the people imagine a vain thing? The king of the earth, the kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed saying, let us break their bands asunder and cast away their cords from us. He that sitteth in the heavens shall laugh. The Lord shall have them in derision. Then shall he speak unto them in his wrath and vex them in his sore displeasure. Okay. And the, the, the reference that we have for this being the Holy Spirit is found in Acts chapter four, um, verse 25 and 26 says, by means of the Holy Spirit, you spoke through our ancestor, David. You'll serve it when he said, why were the Gentiles furious? Why did people make their useless plots? The kings of the earth prepared themselves and the rulers met together against the Lord and his Messiah. So this is actually saying that, yeah, David was writing it, but David was writing what was dictated by the Holy Spirit. OK, so the the Holy Spirit inspired him to write this. OK, then we move on after the Holy Spirit begins the conversation. God responds by saying, yet have I set my king upon my holy hill of Zion. Now, Zion is just the, the permanent capital. It's a mountain in, in, in uh, a mountain of, in, in Jerusalem. OK, so after God says. Yet have I set my king upon my holy hill in Zion. Jesus declares, I will declare the decree. The Lord had said unto me, thou art my son. This day have I begotten thee. Now, if we want a, 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 a scripture explanation of this, we go to Acts chapter 13. Acts chapter 13 and 33 says, God had fulfilled the same unto us, their children, in that he had raised up Jesus again, as it is also written in the second Psalm. Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. See that? Okay. So let's go back to seven. After Jesus, Jesus says that he's going to declare the decree, God responds and says, ask of me and I shall give thee the heathen for thine inheritance and the uttermost parts of the earth for thy possession. And thou shalt break them with a rod of iron. Thou shalt dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel. Scripture explanation is Revelation 14. 14 and 14 says, and the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horse. 
clothed in fine linen, white and clean, and out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, that with it he should smite the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron. And he treaded the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of the Almighty God. You see that? And then the Holy Spirit gives the final warning, one last final warning. It says, Be wise now, therefore, O ye kings, be instructed, ye judges of the earth. Serve the Lord with fear and rejoice with trembling. Kiss the son, lest he be angry and ye perish from the way. When his wrath is kindled but a little, blessed are all they that put their trust in him. Now, I think that this conversation between the, the, the Holy Spirit, the Father and the Son of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit is clear. But what I want to do is give you um, two more pieces of evidence to further uh, hammer home um, these three um, Elohim from Genesis 1. Um, so, and, and what I'm going to give you finally uh, is all three individually uh, stating their claim to first to the creation of the universe. Okay. For this, we go to, uh, let me show you this. In, in Psalms 102 and 25, uh, now it shouldn't be, let me, let me say this, it shouldn't be an issue for you to believe God created all, okay? But I'm still going to show you all three making that claim. Okay. Psalms 102 and 25 says, Of old hast thou laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the work of thy hands. That's the Father speaking. The son says in John 1 and 1, in the beginning was the word, the word was with God, the word was God. Uh, I'm sorry, let me read that again. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. And drop down to 4, verse 4 says, all things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. And then the, the, the Holy Spirit says in Job 26 and 13, by his spirit, he had garnished the heavens. His hand had formed the crooked serpent. Okay. Then we go to, um, we go to uh, the creation of mankind attributed to all three. Beginning with the father in Genesis 2 and 7. And the Lord had formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and man became a living soul. Then the son says in Colossians 1 and 16, for by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions, principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. And we wrap it up with the Holy Spirit in, in Job 33 and 4. The Spirit of God hath made me, and the breath of the Almighty hath given me life. Hmm. So I think that I have provided uh, you with enough evidence to fuel your faith and increase your knowledge of Elohim, uh, the God of creation. OK, and you should now be able to um, you should already accept God, but you should now be able to accept the son and the Holy Spirit as once being God and later as separate entities with all power and authority. OK, so. I hope that this has been a blessing for you. Uh, and until next time, God bless you and keep you.